Morandi is so based. Their supply changes, uh, chains have been compromised. And the West is doing nothing about it. And I think lots of people are going to have second thoughts about buying any electronic devices from any of these Western countries or countries aff affiliated to the West. So the, the Israeli regime is doing no services to the West by carrying out these terror attacks. It's interesting, that you phrase it, it's interesting you phrase it as a terror attack, given that, obviously, well, well, given that Hezbollah is identified by America and many other countries as a terrorist group. And given that it was very specific in its targeting, you know, extraordinarily precise, it is obviously horrific that civilians were killed in the process. But the vast majority of people who were uh, damaged, or wounded or killed by the pager attacks were members of Hezbollah, who are, uh, according to America and Israel, a terror group. So that's how they would categorise it. That's not an act of terror. That would be under the laws of combat. They would say they are taking on combatants, and that's perfectly lawful and legitimate. That is their argument. Yes, if it was pagers and uh, walkie-talkies or cell phones that uh, were in the United States. I think you'd have American bombers over countries who they would claim were behind it. So let's put aside the hypocrisy. But just to be clear, you don't think that Israel yeah. has any military right to but respond? But the evil empire says that they're terrorists. It's Bola firing rockets at, at Israel. Israel. Israel does not have an ethno-supremacist regime. Apartheid South Africa mm -hmm. had never had the right to exist and Israel never had the right to exist. The only existence- So it has no right to defend exists. itself against rocket attacks? But it has no right to exist okay. when it came into being by displacing people and massacring- I understand your position on its existence. Happened. I'm just telling you, given only, it, given it <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exist, given, that you given that it, but again, Piers takes the might makes right approach, but we're not gonna, we're gonna gloss over the most crucial aspects to this story and just say, yeah, 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 they, they, they shouldn't exist. Sure, 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 sure. But the fact is that they do exist. Well, no, you would just agree that, you know, Israel is an illegal occupying settler colony. It has no right to the land. So that's actually crucial that you understand this. You can't just, you know, gloss over it like it doesn't mean anything and it doesn't actually bear on the facts today. It has everything to do with what is happening. It is the cause of October 7th. So again, this is Piers Morgan showing you first class brain rot. They have no right to defend itself. Yeah, they Piers. don't. Yeah, exactly. If you don't have the right to exist, you don't have the right to defend yourself. It's like saying the Nazis have the right to defend themselves. Do you think the Nazis have a right to exist? Piers Morgan, you just agreed that the fact that they don't have a legitimacy to that land, but now you're saying they do have a right to defend that land. What the f***? Like, what? Give me the crack pipe. Put the crack pipe down, Piers Morgan. As long as you have a master race, mm. as long as you have a hierarchy of race, as long as you have one race that considers itself superior to others, there is not going to be any peace. That's just a fact of life. Whether it's in the United States or whether it's in Palestine or whether it's in South Africa, it's not, there's not going to be peace. For Iran, the dismantling and for Hezbollah, the dismantling, or you can call it the destruction, the dismantling of this system has to happen. And this is something that you don't accept, which is fine. You support racism. No, no, I don't, no, no. Hang on, don't. Yeah, beers, Mogran. Don't quote me. And don't misquote me. I don't dispute for a moment that is the intention of Hezbollah, the Houthis, Hamas, all funded by Iran. I have no doubt that Iran would like to see the destruction and removal of Israel. I get all that. I'm just saying As that right now. Yeah, but hang on. Yeah. I'm just I'm just saying that right now it looks like Hamas is losing, Hezbollah is losing, the Houthis are on the run, and their big backer, Iran, seems to have disappeared. And I'm looking at this thinking, this is odd. Where is their big backer? Where is Iran, who's been sponsoring and funding all this terror? Where are they when the real action starts? And many people think, like I said, it's because Iran either lacks the capability or the will to try and respond to what's happened. That's what you want people to think. No, it's, Iran... what, it's what people are saying. Well, that's because what there's people been no are saying, and that is, that is a narrative that you wish... Who, what, what people? Whose people? Again, they're front-loading uh, uh, presumptions and uh, assumptions about the geopolitical situation between Iran and Israel. He's front-loading all this uh, rhetoric about terrorism so that it's based into the question so when you have the time to answer it's like well you have to address the erroneous presumptions first you have to reject the premise the language that it's couched in first before you can actually dismantle all of the propaganda uh and give a, an objective there is a response list. his real name is pliers well that i mean that's what it sounds like when to my ears when i listen to him speak it feels like pliers or or mangling my ears which is fine but then you're going to be struck with reality ultimately and is not exactly 
you know, if they respond, they're cowards. I don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. It, or if they don't respond, they're cowards. And if they do respond, they're, they're, they're terrorists. Yeah, exactly. You can't win no matter what. I mean, the same, it's the same that goes for the, uh, the anti-communist rhetoric the United States State Department uh, has been known to produce since the age of McCarthyism and the Red Scare. Um, you know, the if the if the communist doesn't uh, isn't seen to be organizing anywhere, well, that's because he lurks in the shadows uh, and he's you know omnipotent and omnipresent. And if he is organizing, well, that's because he's you know this terrible, awful, powerful enemy that we must take down. So whether we see him or we don't see the communist, they're it's the same thing. You know, they're all powerful and evasive. It's it's catch twenty two. It's the it's the catch twenty two double standards of American imperial brain rot. The Israeli regime and the Americans have failed in the Red Sea. They, the Ansar Allah survived 70 years of genocidal war backed by the U.S. and your government against, against their people. They defeated the... I saw a really powerful video on, I think it was Twitter, and it was this man passionately defending the Palestinians and admonishing these liberals that are voting blue no matter who. And he's, he put it so eloquently, he said, and maybe you saw this, but he said, uh, just, you know, what you're saying is, as you go to the ballot box, you're stepping over the piles of bodies of all the, you know, amputated and mutilated children. And you're saying, oops, sorry, excuse me. Let me get through there. Got to go vote for, for more of this basically. I mean, he put it way more eloquently. But that's basically what you're doing is, you know, how, how privileged of it is for you, how privileged is it for you that you don't even have to factor in a genocide being done with your name and with your money. When you go to the ballot box, you can think about other issues that are not quite uh, so extreme. You can vote blue because it doesn't really affect you, does it? People who carried out the genocide war. Do you think a couple of airstrikes from, from the Israeli regime is going to change anything? They will continue to in, enforce, as they say, and Allah in Yemen, enforce the genocide convention. And you, your governments are the terror organizations. They're the ones that are funding this genocide. They're the ones giving the bombs. Thank you. Bunker busters He's to go so and bomb based. homes and uh, civilian towers in Gaza. And whenever they carried out, the Western media will say Hamas strongholds, terror centers, Hezbollah strongholds. Why? Because they want to justify these terror attacks. No, the terrorists are in London and, you, and Washington and Paris and elsewhere. But since you think that somehow you're more civilized and that your countries are better than ours, whatever you do has justification. No, the terrorists are the ones who are supporting the Israeli regime who have been carrying out terror for years. Hamas, Islamic Jihad, they are the native population who have been brutalized for 76 years and Hezbollah has been trying to help them. They voluntarily entered this battle last year, Hezbollah, to draw the Israeli army away from Gaza so they would be able to kill less people. They are heroes contrary to what you say, and your government has been helping the Israeli regime to slaughter. They've been giving them intelligence, political support, financial support, ammunition, and of course the weapons they have to, and most importantly, the intelligence. All the all of the five eyes and Western intelligence and the AWACS that fly, and the drones that fly alongside the Mediterranean, both for Gaza and Lebanon, they're helping the Israeli regime carry out its genocide. Isn't the truth about this, that there's a massive geopolitical battle of will going on, where you have Iran, you have Russia, you have China dancing somewhere in the middle, uh, and on the other side, you have the West, and there's a jostling for power and position and geography. Uh, you see it in Ukraine, you see it now uh, in the Middle East. And that Iran is sitting there in a really interesting position where it's seeing Saudi Arabia nudging ever closer to normalizing relations with Israel. And if that was to happen, after all the other Middle Eastern countries that have done that, it's pretty well game over for Iran's ability to destroy Israel and to destroy this normalization process. That's what Iran is terrified of. And that's why Iran has been so aggressively funding these groups, which I would categorize as terrorist groups. You categorize yeah. them as freedom fighters, whatever you want to call them. He's like, just waiting for my turn to speak, waiting for my turn to speak. Yeah, this is it. Trump, you could survive it. Yeah, you survived. That was the thing that caught me, that got me was, or he's like, we can't survive four years of Trump, but four, uh, 300,000 Palestinians didn't survive four years of Biden. You survived four years of Trump. You could survive again. 240,000 Palestinians did not survive four years of Biden. You survived Trump. You survived it. Trump is going to be worse than Biden. Let's measure it. What do you mean relative to what happened to the Palestinians? Tell me. What is so terrifying that you are willing to forgive the genocide in Gaza? Tell me what scares you so much that you are willing to step over Sidra's lifeless corpse with the legs blown off and say, excuse me, sorry. That you will step over Hind Rajab's cold corpse 
that was shot at 360 times by the Israelis while she sat in the car waiting for an ambulance that was blown by Israeli tank. That you step over him, the Rajab's body, sorry, hidden. That you would step over Reem's body. Tell me what's so terrifying. You step over Reem. Ruh al ruh, spirit of my spirit. That you step over the child you can't identify. This child, the head's blown off. You step over them. You step over those 240,000 corpses to get to that ballot box. You step over all of them. You walk by the Palestinian refugees walking by. Where are you going? I'm going to the ballot box. Voting for who? You're too ashamed of us to say it at that time. You walk to the ballot box. You walk over those bodies, piles and piles of those bodies, drenched in the blood. You see those kids in those images of the hospitals, crushed by the rubble, their arms are hanging, blood dripping for no other crime than some random people from the West said this land belongs to us. You will walk all over those corpses, go to the ballot box, vote for the one who did it to them, Jalal. Vote for the one who slaughtered them. Vote for the one who massacred them. Vote for the one who continued to lend every impunity to them. Vote for the one who broke the whole international order. To slaughter those children. To slaughter our brothers and sisters. To commit the most brutal genocide. You will cross all of those corpses to the ballot box. You will put a cross next to the name of Harris, the one who committed the genocide with Biden. And you will yell to those spirits and say, I did it for you. You will look at them in the eye and say, I voted this for you. You will say that I voted for the one who killed you. I voted for the one who gave the bombs to slaughter you. More bombs than Dresden. More bombs than Hiroshima. More bombs than Nagasaki. More bombs than World War II. I voted for the one who gave unfettered access to all those weapons. I voted for the one who sent the Marines to help kill you. And you will dare to look me in the eye and say you did it for Palestine. You did it for them. The nerve, this sheer arrogance of it. It's not for Palestine. It's for your comfort. It's for your status quo. It's for the luxury that you live. Trump is not going to blow up your limbs. You're not going to have a limb amputated in the next four years because there's no anesthesia. You survived four years of Trump. You could survive again. 240,000 Palestinians did not survive four years of Biden. You survived Trump. You survived it. You didn't have your home taken from you. It wasn't handed to Ben Shapiro. It wasn't given to Ben Walsh. The National Guard didn't ethnically cleanse California of Muslims. They didn't go to the East Coast where it's colder. None of that happened to you in the four years. None of that will happen to you in the next four years. What are you so scared of? That you will go to the ballot box and say, I'm voting for the genociders. Why would you rescue Zionism? Why would you rescue Zionism when it's buckling? Why would you restore their invincibility when it's breaking? Why would you go to the ballot box and say Zionism, let me prove to the world that even if they support a genocide, they can still win because no one betrays Zionism. Why would you have the chance to break the two party system? You go and rescue Zionism. Why would you have the chance to finally let people lose because they supported Zionism? Why would you go and help Zionism prove that 99 races run, 99 races won? Yay, yay. Let there be justice in the world. You will not struggle like the Palestinians. You will not suffer anything like them. You see, the, if you don't such a ship issues with America, come to London. London is nice once you get used to the weather. But do not say you're doing it for Palestine. Don't say you're doing it for Palestine. Be honest and say you're doing it for yourself. Because you don't want to be a people of struggle. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the reason he was so successful was because he continued to persevere through the struggle. He was offered the dunya. He said, I will not give up justice. He was offered the comforts. He said, I will not give up justice. But we're telling our kids 
that you are not successful until you have the home and the Tesla. It's, 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 it, 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 even when you think about it. Yeah, wow. That was very powerful. First time I watched that, I had tears in my eyes. I mean, you can feel the, just the genuine outrage, you know, heartbreaking. Vixen ordered Cambodian genocide Clinton sent cruise missiles to Sudan, people died Obama gave the orders to do drone strikes